Ever wondered how WinDebug actually works? Well, stick around and I'll show you how WinDebug debugs a user mode application. Okay, so WinDebug can be a bit overwhelming, but it's not so mysterious. Let me shed some light on how WinDebug debugs user mode applications. So WinDebug, WinDebug.exe, is a regular C++ native Windows application. Windows supports debuggers using various debugging APIs that are baked into Windows. How the debugging works looks like this in memory. The target process will send debug events to a debugging port. The debugger process, in this case, windebug.exe, has a thread that processes those messages. The messages can be notifications of interrupts, events, exceptions, or even commands for the debugger itself. The debugger, when attached, creates a remote thread in the target process. This is the thread that controls the process. When you press break to stop WinDebug and break into the process, this is how WinDebug achieves the break. What WinDebug does is that on that remote thread which is launched within the target process, it runs a function called debug break process. This function will essentially stop the process and allow WinDebug to inspect its memory. Once the target has stopped, WinDebug will call read process memory. WinDebug has the handle of the target process because when it attached to the process or if it launched the process, it will keep the handle that it gets from calling create process or attach process. With that handle, it can read the memory of the process. What it does is it reads the process memory, then it uses that memory and decodes it into all the other constructs that are within WinDebug. When you look at a stack, when you look at threads, when you look at local variables, that's all decoding of the memory that WinDebug is reading from that process. This is the key reason that symbols are needed in WinDebug. The memory addresses cannot be mapped to anything within the executable because executables are just assembler and machine instructions. These symbols contain text. WinDebug looks at the memory addresses when it reads the memory, maps it to the symbols, and then it can actually display readable text within its text box. So when you look at a stack, that's what WinDebug is doing in the back. It's reading the process memory, then it's matching it to the symbols, and then it's writing out the strings for the functions. This is the same when you type dv or you type tilde to see threads or stacks. Same thing, even if you put dv and see local variables, that's what WinDebug is doing. It reads the process memory, then it decodes it using the symbols. Now, I am, uh, I'm really oversimplifying how it works. There is a lot of logic on how it figures out where a function is, where local variables are. It's got heuristics to figure out where stack frames are. I'm, I'm skipping over all that, but the essence of how it works is that it reads the memory and it decodes it by the symbols. Now, another thing it does is that it decodes events. So events are basically raised by windows to the thread that is attached inside the process. So when WinDebug started and attached to the process, it made a remote thread, that thread is getting events. So these events can be exceptions, it can be errors, and there can be a lot of notifications from Windows to tell the debugger what to do. Now these events come ahead of the process. So if the process is running and just say there's an access violation, it doesn't go to the process first. It goes to WinDebug first, and then WinDebug can handle that event or it can return it to the process. Within the list of exceptions that WinDebug handles, there is a special class of exceptions that are very important for how the debugger works, which are structured exception handles. So SEH or structured exception handling is a kind of exception that is raised by the operating system. This can also be raised by hardware. SEH exceptions are not application level exceptions. These are not C++ exceptions. These are not .NET exceptions. These are raised by Windows itself. Exceptions of this class are things like access violation, divide by zero, illegal instruction. 
And there are two very important exceptions in this list, which is breakpoint and single step. Breakpoint, as the name suggests, is to set a breakpoint. How it works is as follows. When a breakpoint is set, that breakpoint is actually interrupt tree. Interrupt tree in x86 means breakpoint. The debugger writes into the target process memory, inserting interrupt tree at the point where the breakpoint is to be inserted. For example, if a breakpoint is to be set on a function, the memory at the function location is replaced with interrupt tree. The instruction at that location is saved in a table by the debugger. Now, when the program is running, if interrupt tree is hit, the debugger is activated. The reason is the remote thread of the debugger always gets exceptions before the target process. When the debugger sees breakpoint of interrupt tree, it will then swap the previously saved instruction into that location and execute interrupt one, which is single step. Single step, as the name suggests, is a single instruction step. This occurs transparently without the user ever seeing. This is one of the key reasons that if you kill the debugger, the target process is killed as well. Because if there are any breakpoints in that target process, the memory of that process is essentially corrupt. If you resume WinDebug at, from a breakpoint, what WinDebug will do is it will swap the instruction at that location with interrupt tree and the entire process repeats itself. So essentially, the breakpoints that are being set on functions is actually being set within the process itself by modifying the instructions. Now, there are other kinds of breakpoints as well, hardware breakpoints, data breakpoints, I'm going to skip that for now because that's a whole another complicated bit. I'll do a video in the future with kernel debugging. Uh, when I reach that video, I'll show a bit on how hardware debugs work. Those are a bit more sophisticated because they actually have to interact with the hardware in order to achieve a hardware breakpoint. A data breakpoint is a good example of a hardware breakpoint. Only the CPU can raise the interrupts needed when data has changed. So a data breakpoint requires the CPU to interact with the breakpoint. Now. With all the modification to the process when putting breakpoints, if you detach the debugger, what the debugger does is it pauses the process. It swaps all the interrupts that it inserted out, swaps all the instructions back, and then it resumes the process by calling a function called debug active process stop. That API call from the remote thread will essentially detach the remote thread and the process will just continue and WinDebug will detach and I believe WinDebug will either close if you have started it on the command line or it will just remain open if you started it in the GUI mode. WinDebug is far more complex than my simple video on how it works. I just wanted to shed some light in how WinDebug works because I keep hearing that uh, WinDebug is too complex, it's too hard. But actually, it's really, really simple to do the basic things in WinDebug. Yes, WinDebug is really complex if you do really advanced stuff. But if you stick to the basic stuff, the way the debugger works is actually really, really basic. And it's really easy to use and really quick to use once you get the hang of it and become fluent at just the basic commands. I'll make another video after this with kernel debugging. I just got to get my kernel debugging set up. Uh, fully working so that I could capture some something of interest. So that might take a while, but I'll work on that and I'll try to slot in a uh, hardware debugging once I do so. Anyway, if you like the content, gentle reminder to subscribe, give me a like and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos. It definitely helps the channel grow and it helps me know what kind of content to produce next. It's definitely been a pleasure bringing you this information I am High Voice, signing out.